Go ahead, please. COVID-19 put professional tennis on hold for almost six months. Tournaments were postponed, fans were left unsatisfied and players were out of pocket. It represented the sport's first significant downtime since the World Tours established themselves in the 1970s. With time to stop and think during the hiatus, a number of top players had a chance to analyse the shortcomings of the sport's governing bodies and criticise the structure which separates men and women on the tour. Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal and Andy Murray have each come out in support of a merger between the ATP and WTA. With support from three of the so-called Big Four, it's surprising that others in the men's elite are yet to be convinced. But why is that? What does a merger between the ATP and WTA really mean? And why now? Over the last 30 years, commercial income has enabled the ATP and WTA tours to succeed independently. But commercialization has also created its own problems. Currently at the four Grand Slams, prize money is split equally between men and women. But on the ATP and WTA tour events, there is still a significant imbalance. Take the 2019 Western and Southern Open in Cincinnati as an example. Men's singles champion Daniel Medvedev took home over 1.1 million US dollars in prize money, while women's singles winner Madison Keys pocketed a little under half that, around 540,000 US dollars. The reason for this inequality is partly due to commercial income. Sponsors are fragmented across both tours, with the ATP tending to win the biggest deals. It would seem companies favour association with the glamour of the Big Four, and a certain player in particular. Combine this with larger TV deals, and it means that overall the ATP generates around 50% more in revenue annually than the WTA. A solution which could level the playing field is to merge the tours. Not only would this provide players with a unified bargaining chip for the top sponsorship and TV deals, but it could also reform the fragmented governance of the sport entirely. Currently, the rules and regulations of tennis are different depending on whether a competition is governed by the ITF, ATP or WTA, with each organisation primarily concerned by what would benefit their own. Darren Cahill, the coach of 2019 Wimbledon singles champion Simona Halep, supports a merger, believing a single commissioner of tennis would be welcomed by all players. The potential unification of the tours also presents an opportunity to consolidate resources that would allow for funding to be released back into the sport. But undoubtedly the biggest potential leveraging tool is whether it makes an attractive prospect for broadcasters. Andy Roddick believes this is a key question when addressing the feasibility of a merger. In the past, both organisations have signed multi-million pound TV deals with various networks and broadcasters. Although this brought in money and added exposure, it meant viewers had to dig deep into their pockets to watch both men's and women's tennis, often across different platforms. A merger, therefore, would also help avid fans view the sport without having to fork out a fortune. Keeping fans' best interests at the core of the decision is crucial. Another sticking point when it comes to levelling the playing field lies with obtaining the agreement of all male players. Despite the likes of Federer and Nadal voicing their support in recent months, others may be more difficult to convince. With the ATP drawing in more revenue, critics would argue that prize money should be weighted in favour of men. Such a requirement would surely be a deal-breaker for the WTA. But with Federer and Nadal in the twilight of their careers, and with no real marketable contenders to replace them emerging, could women's tennis be in a position to take centre stage? The likes of Coco Gauff and Naomi Osaka are not only exceptional young tennis players, but also have huge followings in commercially critical markets. The same was said when the Williams sisters burst on the scene in the early 2000s, but their arrival was so quickly followed by the emergence of the men's big four that women's tennis once again had to share the spotlight. However, the coming decade may well see a resurgence of the female game, as their young contenders could be more bankable assets than those coming through the men's ranks. 
With positive ongoing discussions involving both player councils and governing bodies, it could be a case of now or never for the merger.